DC has a bit of a problem. People aren't watching their films. The following is a World Class Bullshitters exclusive. The last year has been pretty rough for DC, as all of their films have failed to perform at the box office. In late 2022, Black Adam was released. On an estimated budget of $265 million, the film only grossed $393 million. That was not enough to warrant a sequel or any further Black Adam media. Even with the star power of The Rock, the film failed to make an impact. Following the disappointment of Black Adam, DC would release Shazam! Fury of the Gods. For a short time, Shazam! Fury of the Gods would become the biggest bomb in the DCEU's entire history since it started back in 2013. With an estimated budget of $125 million, the film would only bring in $133 million. The first film was a surprise hit, but the sequel was a surprise too. Just not in the way Warner Brothers had hoped it would be. While Black Adam and Shazam! were disappointments, there was no doubt that the next film, The Flash, would break this streak of failures. The Flash had many elements that excited fans, including the return of Michael Keaton as Batman, Ben Affleck is Batman, and a whole slew of DC Easter eggs and callbacks that were guaranteed to get fans back in theaters. The result? Well, that was a little different. The result was a disaster. With an estimated budget of $220 million, and it could be much higher according to other estimates, The Flash would only earn $268 million. This number is a devastating blow to Warner Brothers as the film will lose an estimated $200 million and place it among some of the biggest box office disasters in movie making history. Of the 10 biggest flops in superhero history, six of those spaces are filled by DC films. With DC releasing flop after flop, will their next film, Blue Beetle, fare any different? Let's find out. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by me, Jeff Hicks, and StealingSolo.com. If you clicked on this video, you more than likely like comic books or comic book adjacent material. And well, if you do, you're gonna love Stealing Solo because it's the greatest what-if graphic novel of all time. What if a group of disgruntled Star Wars fans kidnap Harrison Ford and force him to remake Star Wars in their basement? That and a whole lot more is answered in Stealing Solo, a captain's parody. StealingSolo.com is powered by Shopify so you get their award-winning service and security, and I ship out books all the time. If you've bought a copy of Stealing Solo in the last week since it's been available again, it's already on its way to you, and check the WCBS social media page because people are sharing their images of Stealing Solo all over. Fans are excited, and you'll definitely want to get in on the excitement as well, but the only way you can do that is go to StealingSolo.com. And folks, these books are moving fast, and like I keep telling everybody, as soon as we move through the back stock of these books, I'm going to bring you the sequel, featuring a parody of Luke Skywalker. And then finally, the third book will be Frankenfisher, The Bride of Solo. So if you want the entire Stealing Solo trilogy, go to StealingSolo.com today and get yourself a copy of the book. International shipping is being added to the website as we speak, and the variant covers will be available as well. So go to StealingSolo.com today to get yourself a copy of the greatest Star Wars parody since Spaceballs. And now, back to the video. Blue Beetle is the next film from DC. Based on the comic book of the same name, the Blue Beetle was first introduced in 1939. Over the years, there would be a handful of iterations of the character, but the upcoming film is based on the 2006 version, first introduced in Infinite Crisis No. 3. Jaime Reyes is the third version of the Blue Beetle. This version of the character would gain popularity over the years throughout comics, TV, and video game appearances. This August will be his first feature film debut, and it's not looking like the character will have any sort of impact. The projections by Box Office Pro are based on the strengths like the DC brand having a modest strength, and the relatively unknown Blue Beetle hero appearing fresh to audiences. As for weaknesses, it's noted that audiences are becoming more and more selective about which superhero movies they go and see, in addition to some competition from other family-friendly films. Current predictions set Blue Beetle to be a flop. With a reported budget of $120 million via the wrap, the movie appears to have a steep climb ahead of it. With other DC films failing to perform recently, it seems like the Blue Beetle will have to perform a miracle to get superhero fans into theaters. If the movie reviews well, there's a chance that more people will flock to see it. If Blue Beetle fails to break DC and Warner Brothers' string of bad luck in theaters, it will be up to Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom to try and right the ship when it starts showing in late December. The future doesn't look too bright for Blue Beetle. With DC morale at an all-time low, what's even possible for the declining brand? Three flops in under a year with a new film seeming more and more forgettable by the day. It's not a good time to be in the DC superhero business. Blue Beetle will probably end up in Shazam territory as the film doesn't have much controversy or hype surrounding it. There was a murmur about George Lopez's character calling Batman a fascist or the Latino representation, but overall, the film isn't talked about outside of people expecting it to bomb. Blue Beetle could be the exception, or the film could be another DC bomb. However, if it bombs, it won't be the last one this year. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is scheduled for December 20th. 
Amid all the new movie pushbacks, this film still has its original release. What the film also has is a budget higher than The Flash. At a reported $205 million, Aquaman The Lost Kingdom has a steep hill to climb before it will ever break even. While December is a lucrative time for films, see the original Aquaman, The Force Awakens, or Avatar 2, DC fatigue is at an all-time high. Superhero films in general are fairly stale. But the films based on DC are the moldy bread in your pantry. Aquaman and The Last Kingdom has the same problem The Flash did, a hated actor. The Flash suffered from the public perception of Ezra Miller. The actor was involved with a string of illegal activities that killed his public image. Many believe that it hurt the film's box office. Aquaman 2 stars Amber Heard, and like Miller, she too is not liked publicly. After her trial with Johnny Depp last year, her public image declined to the point where she is a social pariah. This could affect the box office as Johnny Depp fans ignore anything featuring Amber Heard. Warner Brothers made a public statement that they stood with her, and the result could be disastrous for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. DC is set to reboot in 2025 with James Gunn at the helm, but with a damaged brand, nothing is guaranteed for DC moving forward. The Blue Beetle is set to release in two weeks. With waning interest in all things DC, it appears that the Blue Beetle is DOA. I want to know what you think about the Blue Beetle. Is it even on your radar? For a lot of people, it is not. I've only seen the trailer once or twice in a movie, and I go to the movies quite a bit. The most disappointing part of all of this is that the film could be very good. But, if it flops, it won't matter. In Hollywood, the only thing that matters is if the film makes money. That's why there are endless strings of sequels and reboots that, if they make money, more films will be released. But there is the flip side of the coin that the film could be absolutely terrible and justifiably bomb. But I'm so fascinated and interested by the DC brand. It's poison at this point. People don't want to touch it. Even with the star power of The Rock, you can't get a hit out of DC. And The Flash, which was sold on the power of Batman, essentially, couldn't make a hit as well. You have to go back to last year's The Batman to find a DC film that's mildly successful, both critically and commercially. That film had a lot of controversy surrounding it because of the casting of Robert Pattinson, but it ended up being all for naught as the film was a hit. With that being said, though, let's look at the previous Batman film, The Dark Knight Rises. That film made over a billion dollars, while The Batman did not. And with everything riding on James Gunn's reboot of the DCEU, well, things aren't looking too bright for Warner Brothers and their comic book films. On the flip side of the coin, the same thing can be said about Marvel, with Secret Invasion having some of the lowest ratings in history, with the last episode having a 10% rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, and the viewership numbers, well, they're so bad they're not even releasing them. It hasn't been since Loki was released that Marvel had a huge hit on TV. After years of She-Hulk and Captain Marvel-adjacent Miss Marvel, the Marvel brand has failed to entice audiences, and the franchise had its first outright flop with Ant-Man 3. Of course, the opposite to that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which was a big hit, but that's also a continuation of a sub-brand that's very popular on its own. So in the chat right now, tell me what you think the Blue Beetle's gonna make at the box office. $5 million, $10 million, will it break even? Will it even make enough money to pay for the craft services? I don't know, but it'll be interesting to find out. If you want to find out about that and a whole lot more, make sure you subscribe to World Class Bullshitters for more World Class content. And while you're down there, also tell us what you'd like to see. If you have any ideas for WCBS content or places you'd like to see us go, send us an email to worldclassbs at mail.com, thebestmail.com, or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, join our Facebook group and page, and follow us on Rumble. 2023 is the great year of expansion for World Class Bullshitters, and we're almost to our goal of 200,000 subscribers. So, Subscribe today, check out our back catalog of content, and enjoy the epitome of pop culture. One last thing before you go, make sure you hit up StealingSolo.com to get the greatest Star Wars parody since Spaceballs. It's an 80-page graphic novel written and drawn by me. It's a comedy of epic proportions, and it can only be found at StealingSolo.com. Supplies are limited, so grab yours today. But folks, I gotta get out of here. I'll be back next time with more. But in the meantime, be smart, be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other. Thanks for watching today's video. Yes, it's over, but don't cry because there's more, a lot more from World Class Bullshitters. And there's only one way to get it. Hit that subscribe button below. When you do that, you'll get notifications and updates from World Class Bullshitters every time we go live. Basically, you won't miss anything. And if there's one thing I hate, it's FOMO. But the thing most people hate more than FOMO is fear of missing out on World Class Bullshitters because there's just some things you can't undo. So folks, do yourselves a favor and never miss anything from World Class Bullshitters. One last thing before you go, hit the thumbs up button. Not for our egos, no. They're big enough as this, but it does help us fight the algorithm here and well, it's man versus machine and that's the real fight. But if that's not your battle, 
that's okay. There's one last way you can help WCBS, and that's going over to shopwcbs.com, picking up a t-shirt, a beer glass, a sweatshirt, a poster, all sorts of ways to back WCBS. The difference between us and other YouTube channels is I'm the artist that makes all this stuff, so if you enjoy art beyond t-shirts, you can even read our comic books. We got it all! We're called the epitome of pop culture for a reason, and no, again, it's not for our egos. So folks, make sure you're involved with every aspect of world-class bullshit, not just for us, but do it for yourself. We're making the change in entertainment everybody out there wants to see. And a special thank you goes out to all of our wonderful patrons who make this content possible. Go to patreon.com slash worldclassbs to get involved and help out the channel.